Yeah, you're the chemistry dude. Words and science and things. Ideally, you can be able to pull away from him. They should visit us so they can get some more horsepower. Welcome to another Whiskey Friday Academy. We've got uh, an illustrious guest with us who happened to stop by. He was working professionally up the road for uh, his Sorensen Motorsports. For Sorensen Motorsports, uh, sponsored by the Air Force in Formula Drift. Um, Mike's been working with us here at Dundon for more than a few years at this point. Uh, we have some Super Squirrel secret projects next door that one day y'all might get to know about. Uh, he's the one that turned us on to uh, certain attributes of alignment in Porsches that would be beneficial. And we did this a couple of years ago on the 1992 yeah. GT3, yeah? Um, and we've been carrying that forward on a number of them, and everybody is rocking, everybody's rolling, everybody's doing great with it. Uh, cars are going fast. Um, and we wanted to kind of back it up for you a little bit today because we get we get really complex and really complicated sometimes explaining how the car reacts, what it needs, what the things are. And we use all of this terminology sometimes that I don't know that everybody out there in Porsche land specifically really understands, yeah. right? I would say that I'm 60, 70%. I'm an engineer. I'm a chemical engineer. So I kind of skipped a lot of the more advanced structures and statics and dynamics and kind of whew, gone. Okay, back to chemistry. Great. Up to strange things that are happening in a beaker. I'm Especially good with that. organic chem. Oh, dude. Well, organic chem is can be fun depending on what it is organically you're doing. Um, I had some professors that uh, would try and refine alcohol past its. There's a anyway. Um, Mike, tell us a little a bit about yourself so that people who are on camera that don't know who you are will get to know you a little better. So I'm a, a engineer, mechanical engineer. Um, I guess I worked at Pep Boys for a few years. <laughs> um, Change some tires, do some axle grease on. Now I'm qualified to be uh, working for a race team. It's crazy. Then I worked for TRD, Toyota Racing Development. They, they sound like a big deal. Yeah, it was kind of a big deal. Yeah, it sounded like a big deal. But I, I started off as the floor cleaner. The you pushing the buffer around? Yeah. Yeah. And clean the They hire buffer. engineers for that? That's crazy. No, it was right? before I was an engineer. Ah, gotcha. All right. All right. I, I was a college student. Right on. And then when I graduated and got my degree, I became an engineer there. And uh then I moved to Nissan. Okay. And I was a Nissan for many, many years. Right on. How many is how many is many, many? It's 17 or 18. Oh, wow. So you saw a lot of cool projects come through. Yeah. And um, always on chassis side? No, I love like parts and accessories. Okay. And then toward the end, before they moved to Tennessee and I quit, um, <laughs> I was doing the uh, stuff for Nismo. Oh, right on. Okay. The uh, OES Nismo parts that you can buy as accessories for okay. your, your car. Right on. And then that was my last thing I did there, I okay. guess. And then I started Moto IQ, yep. which was a um, kind of a media company, right? like websites and web marketing and yep. things like yep. that. And um, I got hired by Falcon Tire, uh, their motorsports division, to be an engineer. All right. And then... Just uh, like uh, 997 GT3 RSR Falcon Tire? Um, yeah. Okay. But, but not that car. All right. All right. Um, and then, uh, when Falcon pulled out of Motorsports, I went to the Sorensen Motorsports. Okay. For their team. Right on. Right so, on. So now I'm doing drift car suspension engineering. Which is funny. So when I, when I first met Mike and he told me, you know, with, with this pedigree that he was going to go work on drift cars, me being, having no fucking clue about drift cars and really that the, the, figure skating based grading that they are kind of graded on as they're going around the racetrack is actually legit and real racing it took me a while as like oh there's no finish line there's no checkered flag how is that racing i don't understand well that's because i don't understand it's not that it's not real racing it's because i don't understand so as i started to understand a little more i was like okay so you do have to go fast and you're graded by how fast you go 
you do have to, you know, there's a lead and there's a follow and you have to play nice with each of these, these things that you're going around. And why don't you take it from there? Because I'm going to show how little I know about it here in like two seconds. And you have to drive in as close proximity and mimic yeah. the, the chase cars to mimic the lead, lead cars moves. Okay. And while being as close as possible. Without hitting them. Yeah. And the lead car has to have the most angle and style. Well, driving a prescribed line precisely and filling zones and hitting clip points precisely. Oh, wow. So like when they show like in uh, some of the Instagram reels and YouTube where somebody's holding a, they got a, a beer on the, on the uh, track wall mm -hmm. and they've got, you know, a wing or something kind of hanging off the car and they knock that beer off, you know, just perfectly without was barely kissing the bumper. That's all intentional. Yeah. And I mean, there's a lot of things you try to set up the car so it could drive it spectacular angles and all going as fast as possible right because if you're fast you'll cause the uh, chase car to have to uh shallow the line sure to try and catch or, up to you or reduce his angle to catch up okay and that'll be like points deduction for him all right and then ideally you can be able to pull away from him ah and they just they can't even stay close anymore yeah. all right i gotcha and then gotcha. Uh, for a lead car you have to be able to drive with a lot of style a lot of angle okay very precisely fill the zones hit the clipping points but be really fast so the trail car has a hard time mimicking you i got you i it's got you probably the most difficult motorsport to set up the chassis and suspension and make yeah things you're, done. you're kind of at opposite ends of the spectrum you're trying to get these obscene angles where the car where essentially the rear end is in slip the entire time and still have some ability to lay down forward thrust of the car right. so it still will progress around the track at some fast rate and um you know like getting the most mechanical grip out of a tire that's way beyond its friction curve sure and uh, we get pretty fantastic amounts of uh grip like which is absurd watching i mean grip for for us you know we're, we're taking a little bit of a uh a squirrel but it's important we'll come back to it so grip as we would term it in porsche land with our de cars and going around is when the tires are not spinning relative to their speed on the ground, you want the tire to be rotating in the speed that it's on the ground, not spinning faster than the cars go on the ground. A drift car, completely opposite. So when I hear the cars have lots of mechanical grip, when the rear tires are... Well, we're getting into like, um, nobody understands this, not even the engineers at the tire companies, but, you know, I believe we're getting into like cool scripts, so... Oh, interesting. Okay. You know, like it's yeah. it attraction. Right. It was like electrostatic, essentially. Well, and the energy state of the rubber is a lot higher because sure. the heat and everything. Super gummy and uh, viscoelastic at that point, kind of filling in all the nooks and crannies that the tire's going over. Yeah. So it's, you know, instead of that slip stick model of adhesion, yeah. it's yeah. this Coombs model that no one's figured out yet. And right. Too complex yeah, for... I don't want to figure that out words. either. Yeah, words. Words and science and things. But, you can look up Coulomb. He's cool. But what's interesting... C-O-U-L-U-M-B, right? C-O-U-L-U-M-B. I think that's right. Coulomb. You're the chemistry dude. Yeah, that's, that's chemistry stuff, I think. Um, digging. It's been 30 years. But... um yeah, I mean, like, uh, in a flat turn, you know, if the surf, depending on the surface, uh, we can certainly generate 1.5 lateral Gs and sometimes as high as two. Wow, that's crazy. And we've seen almost as high, almost three in bank turns. Wow. Uh, but it's three is maybe like an instantaneous. Yeah, where it's like cars getting there. Yeah. Right, right. But, you, you know, like, we've shot TV commercials where, um, you know, like a, a like a road race car is chasing the drift car. And the drift car is sideways and the road race car is going straight. Right. And we had to do a whole bunch of takes because the road race car couldn't keep up with the drift car. <laughs> they should visit us so they can get some more horsepower. Yeah. So, you know, you know, like when people say, oh, this is playing around, not a serious motorsport. Right. I mean, these cars are as sophisticated as, you know, like a GT3 car. Right, 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 right. And they make a th at least a 1,000 horsepower. Sure, and, sure. Uh, 
uh, wide power bands and they have like very sophisticated suspension. Yeah. Even though it's a very tight rule set. Sure. Sure. Um, you know, three ways. Three-way shocks are just about mandatory. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, we do a lot of messing around with the differentials. Yep. Uh, we have quick changes, and we're always trying to find the combination of uh, wheel speed that gives us the best uh, ability to develop slip angle, but sure. still hook up. Right on. Yeah, that's that's an interesting uh, balance, right? Because it's you, you, you found a way to have both, but it's very counterintuitive that you could have both. Yeah, and nobody really understands what's going on. Right, 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 so. right. Let's try some shit and see if it works. Yeah. <laughs> Throw it's, it against the wall, it's stuck. Yes. And, and, you know, like, the setup stuff is really sophisticated. I mean, we do, like, everything, uh, it, you know, IMSA prototype or IndyCar. Guys, right, but, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike's actually here. One of the things that we haven't gone over yet, but we wanted to get this knocked out before uh, we get too far down the line, is... Uh, the uh the DAC, the data acquisition engineer that they have uh for their team, uh has this really cool setup where they built uh uh a, a way to get the data out of the onboard uh logging systems and report it in a way for Mike to be able to quickly interpret what's going on with the car very easily pictorially statistically etc cetera, etc cetera, and be able to tell really fast cars doing this cars doing that regardless of what the driver's telling you so, so if you're an engineer you know you probably know about data reduction right so we collect uh i don't know tons of channels of data at a fairly high hertz and, right uh you know like all the squiggly lines like it, it it's all about squiggly lines it, in the it end it takes a lot to i mean i could Taking out by staring at it, taking uh, data and turning it into information is a whole like sector of industry. And you know, taking all of this, all of the squiggly lines and making it something that's actionable is the thing. And the sooner you can do that, the sooner your team is going to be able to make changes, to make cars faster, et cetera, et cetera. And for instance, like we get all the shock squiggly lines, right? And we turn them into histogram. Yep. So you know, we can see if it, we need to adjust high speed compression, low speed rebound, yep. uh, things like that. And uh, we use make GPS maps and we do like what we call heat charts yep. where um, the suspension or the velocity or compression rebounds rendered in colors. So you see the color overlay of the track. Sure. And you, know, you can even overlay them next to each other to see what changes when you make changes to the car. You know, what's what, what it's doing. Sure, sure. And we discover interesting things like our car is almost in the wheelie the entire course. Like a three wheel wheelie or a, a uh, like a two wheel wheelie? Almost two wheel. Holy hell. Okay. I mean we're hooking up that hard so the front tires it's just are... barely kind of dancing yeah. along the ground. That's probably one of the reasons why you're fast. So Yeah, I mean almost hundred percent of the weight's getting transferred to the back. Holy crap. And um yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. I can understand why as a engineer that's really fascinating to go kind of go after because it's not obvious, it's all kind of new. And you, you know, to make steering geometry work at extreme yeah, steering angles. Yeah, you know, past ninety degrees in some cases. And there's no, you know, Millikan didn't study. Yeah, you can't just open it up and turn to page three hundred and twenty-two and you know, like read the paragraph, uh, look at the formulas. You kind of got to figure it yeah, out. Yeah, like you got to figure it out. Right. So it's, right. It's interesting. It's kind of the last frontier of motorsports. Yeah, it feels right? like it. Feels like unless you're going to go do Formula One, but that's more rule sets and trying to find ways to cheat around those rule sets. Oh, well, I mean that's what it's like in FD. Too. I suppose that's every racing. Honestly, it's you know the the stewards versus the engineers. That's that's kind of the way it's been forever. Dan Gurney created a gurney flap. That's interesting is, you know, like, as far as I know, FD is the only growth motorsport right now. I believe that's true. Yeah. I think the rest of them are or shrinking. Shrinking. Losing yeah, yeah, yeah. Audience and yep. stuff. Yeah. yeah, for sure. You know, the younger generations don't like traditional racing very much. It's kind of political. It's too politicized. Too many governing bodies doing shit. You want to join? Yeah. Come on in. Chuck Diesel has joined us. All right. So Mike's obviously very, very qualified to help us explain to all of y'all the 
this thing called an alignment or geometry that everybody gets very enamored by. What's your geometry? What's your how many cambers are you running in your car? What, mores what's your, are better. More, mores, cambers are better, right? Like so a, more negatives means more go fast, right? Is buy, that, buy them in a 12-pack, save money. Buy, exactly. Buy, buy them by the dozen, get one for free. Get that baker's dozen. But, um, what's interesting in the high-end, pretty developed uh, sports car like a Porsche, mm -hmm. alignment is probably the single biggest thing you can do to improve your handling and lap time. Damn straight. I Damn mean, straight. Um, they already have really good tires. Not right. I would say tires, but uh, everything in the car is pretty good. Comes from the factory, pretty well sorted. And uh, alignment uh, is, is how the car uses the tire for the environment it's going to be used in, and the guy that's behind the wheel, not behind the wheel. So, and literally, you know, we've gone seconds faster mm -hmm. by uh, around like Ridge, for instance. Yep. Um, by doing things to piss off Porsche mechanics, right? Uh, so we'll we'll come back to that. That's a that's an advanced topic. <laughs> our, our guys will not understand anti dive and anti squat until we at least understand uh, camber, caster, toe, um, maybe kingpin angle. You know some other things. What a McPherson strut is. What a double wishbone is. What multi link is. Some of these kind of things, so that they begin to get some semblance of why a Cayman sucks. Ah, oh, shit. I mean, why? I love my Caymans, and we made them a lot better, but God, they're a pain in the No, we love everybody else's Caymans. Fair. Yeah. But fair. <laughs> yeah. We got rid of the Cayman pretty quick, even though the 4RS was really fun. 4RS was really fun. <laughs>